I will honestly say, I don't remember ever speaking a word to Esther the whole time she was there. I think the same basically goes for John. I mean, we talked. John Amos, who John Amos, your father, yeah. We've talked more now, a little bit, but very, very little. We were never friends. We never talked. We, I, if you said at that time, call Esther and ask her about, I wouldn't even have her number. I couldn't have called John. I wouldn't have had his number. We were never friends. We never spoke to each other. Only on the set. That's the only time. We never, ever did anything together. Barbara Broglioni was our PR girl for a Tandem. And at that time, Merv Griffin was doing a lot of shows about, hey, we have the whole cast of MASH, or we have the whole cast of Happy Days here, and whatever. And they said, hey, you know what? We should get good times on to do their thing. He says, I can't get these people to sit in a room together, let alone in a show together. I could not tell you what Esther did. I could not tell you what John did. I knew nothing about him. I know nothing about him now. I don't. Uh, I'm. I know more about the camera people in here than I know about John. <laughs> Do you regret um, kind of not having to get to know these folks, or I do think, you not think about it? I don't. I don't think about it. I think about it this way. I think if we had had a tidier relationship and people that understood this is the way it is, this is the way it's going to be on the show, I think we could have had it. We ran through tremendous adversity for four or four and a half years, whatever it was. If we had had any kind of like, love, whatever, I don't know how long we could have gone. I mean, it would have been that way. I think that they killed the goose that laid the golden egg. I think that they don't understand that I used to say to Johnny Brown, downtown Johnny Brown will play Bookman. I said, one of these days, everybody's going to be out of work and they're going to wonder what the fuck happened. I, I, said that to him, I said that to him at that time. You can ask Johnny Brown. I swear to God, I said to him all the time. I said, these people, anytime you say anything, they get crazy, they get upset. I said, they don't get it, man. This is what it is. And because I had been doing stand-up comedy for a while, I said to them, now, they were actors, and they, they are all very good actors. I don't take anything away from their talent. Their talent is tremendous. And, and you enjoyed performing with them, I assume. I don't, I don't think enjoyed is the word. I think I appreciated their talent. Right. John is a great actor. And you saw it, to me, in a lot of things. But West Wing, mm. I think John was monstrous in that. I mean, he did other things, of course. John is a good actor, a solid actor. And I think it was just this show this situation that was against anything and everything he believed in. Right. He had never been a problem on any other show. And I think John getting fired, I think, was just an amazing... I mean, John's big thing is Roots. You know, that's his right. big uh, whatever, hill thing, mountain climbing mm -hmm. deal. And he was tremendous in Roots. He was tremendous in West Wing. If he would have had that same attitude with us, I think we'd have been in much better shape. Right, and he he learned from getting fired the way to act on the set, and maybe that's what helped him become a better actor. And I think John was always a good actor. He's 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 a solid solid guy as an actor, man. I don't think we're ever going to be friends. I don't think we're ever going to be sitting down eating steak together or anything like that. But as a, but as an acting talent, yeah. I mean, it's the kind of thing, yes, without a doubt. Anything to say about Bernadette Stannis and Ralph Carter as your siblings? I think Ralph faded on us. I like Ralph a lot. I think he's a good actor. I think, though, he just, and this is going to sound terrible, but I think as my, he, he, the show was written for him to do more. Right. And well, as he's militant in right. the beginning, and that kind but, of falls but, off. Well, what happened was, they wanted him to play blackness and to show how a young kid can play the black thing and being intelligent and stuff like that. But realistically, as my character grew, he faded. And I think work-wise, he faded. He mm -hmm. just stopped working. You know, he stopped working. Bernadette, I think, you know, I think Bernadette is not even a problem. Bernadette didn't use her natural resources that I think she has. She was beautiful. She's a beautiful woman. And I just tell this quick story. 
you know, no, she didn't have a lot to do on the show. But everywhere I went, guys would go, man, that Bernadette or Thelma, whatever they call her, man, is she gorgeous. So I went over to do a, uh, uh, a fall guy for Aaron Spelling. And next to the fall guy was uh, 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 the Charlie's Angels and another show. Uh, and on fall guy, we had Heather Thomas. And on Charlie's Angels, they had, you know, Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Now, Farrah Fawcett put out a calendar or whatever you want to call it, a poster, pin up, yep. you know, and it sold like three million posters. Right. And I said, you know, Bernadette could do something like this because there's black guys at war who love her. They love her. So I came back and I said to the tandem people, how about Bernadette doing a pinup thing? You know, that'd be great. You know, no flesh, just, you know, whatever it is. Norman Lear, John Amos came to me and said, how dare you put our girl in a position like that? She is not a hoe. I know you work comedy clubs and you're used to these hoes coming around. That ain't happening here. You keep your illicit mind off of that and you never, ever bring that up again. And I was like, well, no, I, it has nothing to do with being a hoochie or anything like that. It's just everybody loves her and they would love to see her in the, the bikini thing. And they came down so hard on me. I never brought it up again. And it's always hard when I go anywhere. Any disc jockey, any radio guy, any fan or whatever. I mean, we do autograph shows because that's where we're reduced to now. And guys come and go, oh my God, I grew up on you. I love you. I, I, mm. And the guy will be with his wife and he'll go, this is just like, a, 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 and you go, this is a guy that would have bought a poster. In the old days, <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing? And to this day, she still feels kind of the same way. So, I mean, I think that's where she should have gone. And also the thing that amazes me is she never got a role as that pretty gorgeous chick because we didn't really have that in those days. We didn't have this great looking chick, you know, woman. Nowadays, there's a few who are actresses, you know, Holly Berry and a couple others. And I'm not taking anything away from Viola Johnson, uh, Viola Davis mm -hmm. or any of those other people, but they're not that hot chick. You know, they're not that chick. Holly Berry is the closest we got. In my day, the hottest black woman we had was Lola Falana. She was in every show we used Lola Falana. Most of these guys don't even know who Lola Falana is. What about uh, Jeanne Dubois as Walona, my, one of my favorite characters? Janae, I will say this. <laughs> she was always trying. She was always pushing. She was always letting... Janae is the kind of... And I like Janae. <laughs> but <clears throat> she thinks I don't like her. I wish she would see this and say... I, I, I wish she would see this. I'm going to look in the camera. Janae, I do like you. I have nothing against you. She's fine. But Janae is the kind of girl she would go... You know, I was in Golden Boy with Sammy Davis Jr. and I danced. You know, I could dance on the show too. I sang. You know, I don't know if you know I sang the Jefferson's theme song, but I did that also. I designed hats too, you know, and I have tons of hats I bring them on the show. And then I have scarves that I do also, and I write songs. And, you know, I have an album. It's not really with a label anymore, but I do a lot of that. And I write. I write poetry. I have a whole big poetry book, and I have a look. You go, okay, nice talking to you, Janae. It's very nice to see you again. It went out. I, I will say this, without Janae, I don't think that Janet Jackson would have ever gotten our show because she complained, mm. and, I, and it's not even complained. She uh, laid out her side of whatever so much that the writer said, we've got to do something to get her off our backs. <laughs> <laughs> and so they brought in uh, Janet Jackson. Uh, I, I was a big fan of Alona. Uh, it, it sounds like maybe she didn't understand that people loved her as that character. And they loved was... her as a character, but she wanted more right. to do. More to do. And 
somebody would have a sizzle reel every year of just her entrances. <laughs> yeah. Hi, kids. Hi, Flo. Hi. And like I said, she was in the show for like maybe four or five minutes. She had a rack of clothing bigger than this room. Her and Adela Farmer would be start on Monday. And I don't know if I could wear this. And then, and then what kind of wig? She have a wig girl come by. And you, you, you have four minutes. Relax with it. <laughs> <laughs> How was it working with Janet Jackson as Penny? Bernadette always tells a story. And so I'm doing Bernadette's story. It's not my story. Bernadette remained close to Janet Jackson. Okay, Not close, but friends with I, And she had talked to Janet Jackson someplace. I don't know where. And Janet Jackson says, oh, how is Jimmy Walker doing? He says, well, why don't you call him and ask him? He says, oh, he never spoke to me when he was on the show. Because I never, I don't speak to kids. I don't talk to kids. <laughs> it's my, one of my most. W.C. Fields. I, I, I really am. <laughs> Except for Ralph, who was on the show I like. I never speak to kids. I have nothing to say to kids. 